Hey there, I'm Sarah. Before I dive into my story, hit that like button and subscribe if you're into tales of family drama and standing up for yourself. Trust me, you're going to want to stick around for this roller coaster. I'm 17, top of my class at Westview High, and living in what feels like a pressure cooker with my dad Tom and his new wife Linda. It's been three years since mom passed, and things have never been the same. Dad remarried pretty quick, and let's just say... Linda ain't exactly stepmom of the year material. My days are packed. I'm busting my ass to keep my grades up, dreaming of getting into a good college and finally breathing some free air. After school, I'm slinging burgers at Joe's Diner downtown. It ain't glamorous, but it puts some cash in my pocket and gets me out of the house. The only bright spot in this mess is my best friend Jake. He's been my rock through all this family drama. We've known each other since kindergarten. And lately, I've been catching him looking at me differently. I'm not blind. I can tell he's got a thing for me, but he hasn't said anything. Honestly, with everything else going on, I'm kind of glad he hasn't. I don't know if I could handle that on top of everything else. Speaking of everything else, Linda dropped a bomb on us last week. Her kidneys are failing, and she needs a transplant. I felt bad for her at first. I mean, I'm not heartless. But then Dad started giving me these looks, and I knew what was coming. Sarah, honey, we need to talk. I braced myself. What's up, Dad? It's about Linda. You know her situation is serious. Yeah, I know. It sucks. He cleared his throat. We were hoping. Well, we need you to get tested. To see if you're a match for Linda. My stomach dropped. You want me to give her my kidney? We're just asking you to get tested for now. It would mean a lot to us. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Dad, that's a huge ask. I'm 17. What about my future? My health? Your future? Sarah... This is about saving a life. Your stepmom's life. I bit my tongue to keep from saying what I really thought about Linda. I need time to think about this. He nodded. But I could see the disappointment in his eyes. Don't take too long. Linda's health is declining rapidly. I felt like I was going to be sick. I called Jake as soon as I could. They want you to do what? Jake's voice crackled through the phone. Get tested to see if I can give Linda my kidney. Can you believe it? That's messed up, Sarah. You're just a kid. They can't expect you to make that kind of decision. Tell that to my dad. He's acting like I'd be a monster if I said no. What are you going to do? I sighed. I don't know. I guess I'll get tested. Maybe I won't even be a match, and this will all blow over. But of course, life isn't that simple. The results came back. And wouldn't you know it? I'm a perfect match for Linda. The tension in the house has been unbearable ever since. Dad's walking around like he's won the lottery while Linda's suddenly acting like we're best friends. It makes my skin crawl. I'm trapped, guys. On one side, I've got my dad and Linda pressuring me to go through with this. On the other, I've got my own fears about the surgery, my health, and my future. Plus, there's a part of me that can't help but wonder. If the situations were reversed, would Linda do the same for me? I knew something was up when I walked into the living room and saw dad and Linda sitting there, looking all serious. They had that we need to talk vibe, and I was not here for it. Sit down, Sarah, Dad said, his voice all stern. I perched on the edge of the armchair, ready to bolt if needed. What's going on? Linda leaned forward, all fake sweetness. Sweetie, we've been patient, but it's time to make a decision about the kidney donation. I told you I needed time to think, I said, feeling my heart rate pick up. Dad's face hardened. Time's up, Sarah. Linda's health is deteriorating. We need an answer now. I couldn't believe this. Now? You're seriously cornering me like this? We're not cornering you, Linda said, but her eyes said different. We're just concerned about my health. That's when it hit me. All the times Linda had been cruel to me over the past year. The accidental spills on my homework. The snide comments about my appearance. The way she'd forget to save me dinner when I worked late. And now she wanted my freaking kidney? I can't do it, I blurted out. I'm sorry, but I can't, Dad exploded. What do you mean you can't? This is your stepmother we're talking about. I know, but... But nothing, he shouted. This is life or death, Sarah. How can you be so selfish? I felt tears pricking my eyes. It's not selfish to be concerned about my own health and future. Linda started fake crying, which only pissed me off more. I thought we were family, she whimpered. Family? I laughed bitterly. You've never treated me like family, Linda. Not once. 
Dad stood up, towering over me. That's enough. I won't have you speaking to your stepmother like that. I stood my ground. No, it's not enough. You both need to hear this. I'm not a spare parts factory. I'm a person with my own life and dreams. And I'm not sacrificing my health for someone who's never shown me an ounce of kindness. The room went dead silent. Then Dad's face turned a scary shade of red. If that's how you feel, he said, his voice dangerously quiet, then you can get out of my house. I blinked, sure I'd heard wrong. What? You heard me. If you won't help Linda, then you're no daughter of mine. Get out. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Dad, you can't be serious. I've never been more serious in my life. You have an hour to pack your things and leave. I ran to my room, tears streaming down my face. I grabbed my phone and called Jake. Jake, I need you, I sobbed. Can you come over? I'm on my way, he said without hesitation. I threw some clothes and essentials into a duffel bag, my mind reeling. Where would I go? What would I do? As I stumbled down the stairs, I saw Dad throwing the rest of my stuff onto the front lawn. Dad, please, I begged, don't do this. He wouldn't even look at me. You made your choice, Sarah. Now live with it. I stood on the lawn, surrounded by my belongings, feeling like my whole world was falling apart. That's when Jake's beat-up Corolla screeched to a halt in front of the house. He jumped out, eyes wide. Sarah, what the hell happened? I couldn't even speak. I just fell into his arms, sobbing. Hey, hey, he said softly, holding me tight. It's gonna be okay. You can stay with me and my folks, all right? We'll figure this out. As Jake helped me load my stuff into his car, I caught a glimpse of Dad watching from the window. For a second, I thought I saw regret in his eyes. But then the curtain fell, and he was gone. I climbed into Jake's car, feeling numb. I can't believe he actually kicked me out, I whispered. Jake squeezed my hand. His loss, Sarah. You did the right thing. No one has the right to demand something like that from you. As we drove away from the only home I'd ever known, I felt a mix of fear and relief. I had no idea what the future held, but at least I was free from the pressure and manipulation. And I knew one thing for sure. I had a true friend in Jake. Whatever came next, I wouldn't face it alone. Moving in with Jake's family was a lifesaver. His parents treated me like their own kid, giving me the spare room and never making me feel like a burden. But even with their kindness, I struggled. Some days, I could barely drag myself out of bed, feeling guilty and depressed about everything that went down. I threw myself into school, determined to finish strong despite the drama. That's when I started hearing whispers. Turns out, Dad was trash-talking me to anyone who'd listen, painting me as some kind of heartless monster. It hurt like hell, but I kept my head high. Then came the bombshell. Jake's mom, who works at the hospital, let slip that Linda had a history of this crap. She'd manipulated other people for money, and even tried to guilt an ex into donating an organ before. Learning this felt like a punch to the gut, but it also validated my decision. I started seeing a therapist to work through my abandonment issues and the trauma of being kicked out. It was tough, but it helped me start healing. One night, Jake and I were studying late. He looked at me all serious and said, Sarah, I need to tell you something. I like you, as more than a friend. I was shocked, but in a good way. I like you too, Jake. I think I have for a while. We started dating, and it felt right. He'd been my rock through all this mess. Graduation day came, and I walked across that stage as valedictorian, full ride to State University in my pocket. I felt on top of the world. Then, out of nowhere, Dad showed up at Jake's house. Sarah, can we talk? He asked, looking sheepish. What do you want? I asked coldly. I... I wanted to apologize. Linda found another donor, and I realized how wrong I was to pressure you. I laughed bitterly. So you're only here because you don't need my kidney anymore? Thanks, but no thanks. I'm doing great without you. I shut the door in his face, feeling stronger than ever. I'd survived. I was thriving. And I wasn't about to let anyone drag me down again. Two years flew by, and I was crushing it at State U. My pre-law classes were tough, but I loved every minute. I even landed a sweet gig at Johnson & Mills, this hotshot law firm downtown. Life was good, you know? Then, out of the blue, Jake hits me with some news. Sarah, you might want to sit down for this, he said, looking all serious. What's up? I asked, feeling my stomach knot. It's about Linda, 
Her transplant. It didn't take. She's back on dialysis. I felt, I don't know, conflicted. Like I didn't wish her harm, but I couldn't help thinking about what might have happened if I'd given her my kidney. Before I could process that bombshell, my phone buzzed. It was Dad. I hadn't heard from him since that day at Jake's house. Sarah, please. We need help. Linda's medical bills. We're drowning. Can you spare anything? I couldn't believe it. After everything, he had the nerve to ask me for money. Sorry, Dad. Not my problem. Don't contact me again. I blocked his number, feeling a mix of anger and relief. A few weeks later, I was filing some paperwork at the firm when something caught my eye. A familiar name. Thomas Reeves. My dad. I knew I shouldn't, but curiosity got the better of me. What I found made my blood run cold. Dad had been evading taxes for years. And Linda? She'd been running an insurance scam, claiming treatments she never received. It was all there in black and white. I sat there, staring at the documents, my mind racing. What should I do? In the end, I knew I had to do the right thing. I made an anonymous tip to the authorities. Things moved fast after that. Within a month, Dad and Linda were arrested. I watched the news coverage, feeling weirdly detached. The day of their sentencing came. I don't know why, but I felt like I needed to be there. As the judge read out their sentences, five years for Dad, three for Linda. I felt this weight lift off my shoulders. Dad caught my eye as they let him out. He looked... defeated. Part of me felt sad, but a bigger part felt free, like I could finally close this chapter of my life. That night, Jake threw me a surprise party. His parents were there, along with my college crew. As I looked around at my chosen family, I felt this surge of gratitude. Speech! Jake called out, grinning. I raised my glass. To family, the ones we choose. To surviving the tough times and coming out stronger. And to karma, may she always deliver. Everyone cheered, and as Jake pulled me in for a kiss, I knew I was exactly where I was meant to be. The road had been rough, but I'd made it. And the future? It was looking brighter than ever. The story's over, but I've got a question for you all. If you were in my shoes, would you have given your kidney to Linda, knowing what you know now? Was I right to refuse, or should family always come first, no matter what? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'm really curious to hear what you'd do in this situation. If you enjoyed my story and want to hear more like it, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Your support means the world to me and helps me keep sharing these real-life dramas. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you in the next video.